Hey, what's up, guys? Do you want to learn how to make money on real estate in the niches? Well, there's riches to be found there, and I have a special guest on who's going to be teaching us how to take your existing real estate, or if you're just getting started in real estate, and find opportunities that no one else is pointing at right now to put more money back in your pocket. All right, let's get started. Hey, it's my pleasure to introduce Aaron Adams of Alpine Capital Solutions. I've known him for going on 15 years. He's an avid real estate investor. He has many different levers he's pulling on when it comes to investing in real estate. And I couldn't think of anyone more interesting to bring onto my channel to discuss what the current state of the market is, how he's driving revenue to his bottom line and what the opportunities are for you as a existing real estate investor. Maybe someone's considering getting started in real estate, how to get past that line and really take your investing to the next level. Aaron, hey, thanks for being on. Always good to see you, Clint. I know, I know. So, um, you know, before we got started, we were just talking about the, the different things that you're doing right now. And, and you want, before we go into that, just give some people some context about how long you've been investing in the in the different things that you're you're uh, into. You know, 25 years ago, I was teaching high school, and man, I love teaching. I love coaching. That was, that really was my superpower. It was what I was best at. Uh, but I didn't like the prospects of living off of 40 or 50 grand a year for the next 25 years, especially in Southern California. Uh, I started educating myself. I started at Barnes and Noble buying some real estate books. Uh, I, I began attending some weekend seminars, and then I just jumped in the water and bought, bought my first property in 2000. It was a duplex, and somehow convinced my wife to move into one side and rent the other out. But we were living there for free. You know, our tenants paid the mortgage, uh, and that that was a, a, a shift for me mentally. That was the first time I really thought, man, you know, passive wealth accumulation could be a good thing. Now we sold that property six months later, and I made 50 grand. And for a high school teacher making 40 grand a year walking out of escrow with a check for just over 40,000 in net profits like was massive. Because now, in addition to having some experience as a passive investor, I also had made some active money. And, and so while teaching and coaching and finishing up my master's degree, uh, I started doing deals on the weekends. And over the next four years, year four, fast forward a few years later, uh, I still made 40,000 bucks at the high school, but uh, I made over $700,000 from uh, several projects that I had flipped active income. And so, uh, you know, I've always been interested in active investing as a way to buy more passive properties. And I know, you know, you and your partners have always been both active and passive in terms of deals that you've bought. And I don't think a lot of people think of that connection. And so I've never considered myself a single family home guy or a multifamily. Um, we just chase returns and we chase opportunities and, and that's been an evolution. It's like 25 years later, I have this tool belt of different strategies from going to foreclosure auctions to buying tax liens to flipping properties that have allowed me to make money actively that I can then park into free and clear passive properties. Yeah, and so, you know, those of you that are watching this right now, full disclosure, uh, I've been investing with Aaron for, for going on 10 years. We're in a, a lot of deals together mobile home parks, apartment buildings, single family homes. I flip properties with them. We have a property management company. And, and so what I'm pulling back the curtain and what it, we're showing you today by being here and, and watching this is that what he's gonna be showing you is how to make money in real estate when you think that you can't, or when people say, hey, the interest rates are too high. Aaron, what, what I found is he's always shifting. He's like, all right, this isn't working right now. Well, then we're gonna go on to this and we're gonna find another thing that's working. So what are some of those things right now in today's market where everybody's going, oh, boo-hoo, the interest rates are too high, the cap rates aren't there? What are you doing? You know, it's interesting that it, it, to understand what the opportunities are, you have to understand that we're severely underbuilt. If you go back to 2008 when the market crashed, uh, we were overbuilt by about 4 million homes in this country. And you fast forward, uh, you know, 15 years later, and we're short six million properties. And so that's created interesting opportunities in manufactured homes. You know, I have four manufactured uh, home dealerships now. And, and it, when that home gets on the assembly line, that's seven days to completion. And, and those of you that have built a home, you know it's like seven months is considered good in the stick built world. So I, yeah, I don't think those rectangle home boxes are sexy or cute, but for affordability and speed, it's, it's one of the reasons why we've jumped into that whole space. So with under that umbrella is trailer parks, is RV parks, 
um, and, and, and the opportunities that are there. I mean, when I left Southern California in 2005 and started Alpine Property Management uh, in Indianapolis, everyone was like, why, why are you leaving California to move to a flyover state? Like, nothing is cute or sexy about Indi Indianapolis. And I said, well, you can buy a property there for 30,000 bucks and rent it out for 800 a month. That's sexy to me. Um, and, and, and they said, well, what is it, in a war zone? And I was like, no, the, the, you can get the war zone house for 1,000 bucks. And so that led us to Indianapolis, to Kansas City, uh, ultimately down to Dallas. And, and, and so what, if you think of the U.S. as one whole market like we do, then, and, you're, and you have a value on making double-digit returns on your money uh, passively, then that leads you to, to a lot of different, different ways to monetize the real estate space. And so that's, that's really kind of been the arc for us over the years. Okay, so let's just talk about um, the manufactured homes, and then I want to get into that stuff you're doing in China. You're bringing stuff over here and those other strategies we're talking about. But on the manufactured homes, so here's something. Uh, we got a place in Winston-Salem, 28 pads. Nothing's on it. Pick this place up. Pennies on the dollar. Now we have to get homes put on that. So we did 20 homes, and, and a lot of them are three-by-twos. And what, what did that look like for us to buy those manufactured homes that we put on those uh, pads. So then, so the number that really becomes sexy, when, when builders talk about construction, they talk about price per square foot. And if I'm building a, a, a stick-built starter home, vinyl siding, three bedroom, two bath, you know, 1,000, 1,100 square feet, the cheap, you know, 15 years ago, I could build that home for 75 bucks a foot, not counting the land, not count, right? Just my cost to build that home. And you, you know, your dad was a builder, so you're familiar with cost per square foot. Um, you know, I built a pool house in my backyard, and it's upper middle class finishes, and, and, and there's no way I was less than 250 a foot on that right now. And if you call up a builder and say, hey, I want to build a starter home, they won't even mention anything south of 225 a foot. That's about the cheapest that anyone's going to quote you. But you can buy a manufactured home, and we bought those homes for, for that project uh, in North Carolina for you for about $70 a foot. That's the opportunity. That's the compelling because it's a brand new home built to, to housing and urban development standards. Now you have transportation costs and you have to set the home and you got to put skirting and build a deck. So there's some ancillary costs, but even after all of those, you're still well under $100 a foot. And what's interesting is that rents. So if you have a three bedroom apartment, it's running for a thousand a month. I can still rent that, that, that manufactured home. Uh, for within 5% of that rent amount. And so you're getting higher returns and you're able to buy for pricing that we haven't seen in the stick bill world for 10 years. And so that's what we've done with you and that's what we've been doing in Kansas City, in Indianapolis, and in, and, and in Idaho. Well, that's something I think, you know, investors should be looking at as the manufactured homes is because as we did, you know, we brought them out. I think we picked them up for about 82000 a piece. And as you stated, you know, when you're looking at manufactured homes, just not the house itself, you got to put it on the property. So you have the, the transportation costs. You then have to skirt it. You got to build a deck around it. You have to hook up the utilities to it. So that's about another $15,000. So we're probably all in on the 20 homes that we bought, let's say 100K. And here's the thing we're renting those out for between $1,200 and $1,400 a month. Yep. So, when, so, so when you do the math, we're looking at, what, 15 cap on those properties. Mm -hmm. That's the difference that, that people don't understand. That's something you, you, I mean, you started this. I mean, you're the first person that came to me and said, hey, Clint, this is what we're doing. You started doing this three years ago. You saw this happening and you're out there, you're doing it in Idaho, right? Yeah, in fact, uh, we've even taken it one step further because there's a little town called Arco, Idaho, population like 1,500, but it's next to the National Laboratory. So we're talking... 10,000 jobs, six-figure, nuclear research, so it's a big deal. And little Arco, Idaho is five minutes from the entrance, and then there's nothing, craters, you know, there's nothing else near the, the 30, 40 minutes away. So I went and I met with the, ma the mayor of Arco, and I said, hey, Mr. Mayor, there's a KOA RV park with 70 lots that um, is on the market. And I said, I don't want it for a KOA because every year as a KOA it closes in the winter because Idaho and snow. I said, what I want to do is I want your permission to put year-round renters in each one of those dirt slots. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to individually meter the electric, individually meter the water so that they can pay their own utilities. And then I want to move 70 contractors in, uh, 70 employees in who will then work at the National Laboratory and, and want proximity, that they value proximity. I said, would you, he's like, I, Aaron, I love that. 
That's that's amazing. And so we've been doing that in 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 Texas uh, near Tesla, where rents are ridiculous. And we took RV parks and got permission to put long term tenants. We've done that here in Idaho. So if you live in an area that has ridiculous rents, um, we have found that city leaders and city planning and, 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 and zoning are very receptive to this idea of long term uh, rentals in RV parks. And now I'm making like 20 percent cash on cash returns from that from that investment. Uh, and so, yeah, we're, 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 we're buying manufactured homes, we're putting them on foundations and, 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 and putting them in individual lots and monetizing them. We're buying trailer parks like we've done with you in North Carolina and we're making returns off of those. And then we've also started doing RV parks as long-term rentals and it's just been phenomenal in terms of returns. Okay, so if I'm intrigued by this and I'm a real estate investor, so how do I get started to go out there and find a manufactured home uh, and how long does that process take from start to finish and what are some things I should be paying attention to that would be important to me to make sure that this is going to work out so it's funny because when, when, when I look at like tech tech can completely transform real estate I mean who hasn't looked at Zillow to see what their house is worth in the last 15 years um, and, and so tech has had a big impact on, on, the, on the mobile and manufactured space Facebook Marketplace has become this buy and sell platform for, for mobile homes and manufactured homes. And uh, we're, you know, we'll find homes on there. But, you know, let's say you live in a trailer park in pretty much anywhere in the country except for Hawaii because there's no such thing as trailers in Hawaii. Even in Alaska, they have manufactured and mobile homes. We'll, we'll find someone that lives in a park and they want to sell their home. They're not listing it with a realtor. There's, you know, Craigslist doesn't exist anymore. They're putting it on Facebook Marketplace. So those of you listening to this, I know maybe you've, you're, you, you know, you're anti-social media. You don't use that Facebook account anymore. You might want to circle back and refire that up and log in again because uh, Facebook Marketplace has become like the, the swap meet of the world, the penny saver, the thrifty nickel that we all used to use to buy and sell before. And, and what's funny is our dealerships, we haven't even set up web pages for the dealership because we don't find tenants from the web pages. We do a paid out on Facebook Marketplace. We don't find buyers for our homes. So as a buyer looking to invest, we're finding them there. And then on the sales side, we're, 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 we're moving them and finding tenants for them uh, in that same platform. So tech has just really impacted that, that whole industry through Facebook. It's crazy. Well, how about if I wanted to buy a new one and bring it in? Yeah, so you know we've worked with a lot of, of uh, your clients, with Anderson clients, with Infinity clients, um, and to, to help them with that. I mean, you can go to, you know, a lot of you have seen like a Clayton Homes, where in your town, maybe on the fringe in the commercial area, there's a big lot with brand new single wides and double wides sitting on it. You can go in there and they're, they're gonna mark those up, you know, 20, 30%. Um, uh, but, you know, it's still gonna be significantly cheaper than a stick bill home would be. And so, you know, the opportunities there, and we have investors who we work with and we show them kind of how to navigate that and how to map that out. So like one little secret, if you own a trailer park, even if it's like three units or four units, you can go to the factory and buy these homes as if you were a manufacturer. I mean, as if you were a dealer yourself. You have access to buying dealer pricing and we can, we can help with that connection on that. Wow. So, you know, this is, I think it's a great opportunity because prices are still hanging pretty high right now. And if you're trying to get in in real estate or you just want to keep growing your portfolio and you don't want to pay those street prices that the stick belts are being charged, because at the end of the day, it's all about cash flow, right? Yeah. And so why spend more money to get that same cash flow if you don't have to? But can, you can also flip them too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, there's some opportunities in uh, multifamily that have popped back up because with interest rates going up, you know, two years ago, I could buy a fourplex um, and, and, and sell it as a 5% deal because people could borrow 5% money on investment properties. Those interest rates are now 7%. So what it's done is it's driven the price down on people selling multifamily because nobody wants to buy a 5% apartment building and borrow at 7%. So there's some opportunities where, where sellers have been dropping the price in the multifamily that, that, that are unique. And then there's opportunities to buy and sell manufactured homes because you know we can give you a list of lenders that will lend on a home, even if it's in a park and not on a permanent foundation. So it's kind of like having the Rolodex and having the understanding. You know, I always say that real estate is five miles wide and about three inches deep. 
none of it's hard for your brain to process cognitively. What, there's just a ton of information. And so uh, one of the things that we do is on a monthly basis, we push pause and my partners from all of our markets, so we're in Charlotte and Winston and Kansas City and Idaho and Dallas and Indianapolis, we all congregate at, at my offices either in Indianapolis or Idaho. And we give it, it's like Willy Wonka. We give investors the chance to spend three days with us finding out what we're doing. Uh, we, we discuss active investing. We discuss passive investing. And, and they get access to us uh, throughout the day. And then we do cocktail parties in the evening. So we've, we started that years ago. And, you, you know, I remember you, you coming out to Indianapolis over 10 years ago. And uh, it's, it's a very, you know, it's like I left the classroom in 2003. How ironic that I found a path back to the classroom every month. Yeah, well, I mean, that's one of the things about your business as well is, you know, he talks about those flyover states, but what Aaron's also doing is sourcing real estate there. So when he when he tells you, hey, you're getting a property that's an eight or a 10 cap, um, he's also finding those properties. We do it together in Winston-Salem. He's doing a, an Indy. And he actually has a class. And if, you, and if you're interested and you would like to come out and spend some time with him uh, on a monthly basis, we have a special link. Look in the show notes. I've got it put inside of there. Just click on that link and we can get you registered for that uh, to go out there. And you're going to learn a ton when it comes to real estate investing. Because one of the things that is, I think if you're just getting started, the questions, you know, I hear I'm going to buy this house, but I don't know how to rehab it. What is it? How much should I put into it? Because that's where I think a lot of people run into problems. They, they rehab the property to a point where they want to live there, right? Yeah, yeah they, they get emotional about it. And they, and you know, all real estate's emotional. The biggest mistake I ever made a couple years ago was buying a rental property. My kids both swam in swimming every day. And I bought a, a, a rental, it's an Airbnb, on the way to the swim to the aquatic center. So every day I'm driving by it thinking, man, that thing needs a pick a fence. That thing needs a concrete drive. And I over rehab this property because I was, I kept imagining myself living in it. And, uh, you know, you and I have done phenomenal as investors over the years in blue collar neighborhoods that we wouldn't be interested in living in, but we would provide clean, safe, affordable homes. You know, I, I, some people kind of lean away when I mention trailer parks or manufactured home committees, uh, communities. And, and, and I think, you know, as long as you're compliant and it's safe and it's clean and you, you, you're providing affordable housing, when you look at the six million homes we're short in this country, the biggest and the biggest hole is in affordable housing. It's becoming crisis level. That's why you see uh, in areas like California and, and, and Washington, uh, accessory dwelling units just becoming so popular. Literally, uh, local uh, uh, city councils and mayors are circumventing city planning offices that have been the nimbyism, not in my backyard, obstructing all development. And so that's okay. We're going to eliminate single family home zoning. And now you can put a tiny home in your backyard. And you and I have a mutual client, very blue collar guy, works for the California Department of Transportation, but he's had two rental properties in Irvine for over 20 years. And he was, he's making good money, three, 4,000 a month from each one. But now he's adding three little accessory dwelling units in the backyard of each one, and he will get four thousand. I mean, it's it's going to change his whole financial life. Totally. Yeah, he's and now he's looking at twenty thousand a month, and now it's just it's a whole new new direction. And so, you know, have, as, having started as a high school teacher, the best advice I can give to someone is put yourself in an educational environment, put yourself in a, in, a, in an opportunity where you can hear all these kinds of ideas and then pick something that resonates with you. That's why we've also started live streaming that event. Maybe you don't have the money for a plane ticket. Maybe you can't fit this into your schedule for work or whatever. We'd love to have you join us on a live stream and, and there's no cost for that. And so nope. we want you to have that education. You know, Clint has a phenomenal business. Um, all uh, for nine, over 99% of my clients are Anderson business advisor clients for their tax, for their legal. And um, we just want them to get the education. We're not, try we're not out there trying to sell a bunch of classes and mentorships and, and trainings. We're just trying to put investors with the knowledge they need so they can quarterback their money and invest passively and invest actively when it makes sense for them. Well, tell me about that, uh, the storage stuff you're doing with, with China, you're bringing in. So, um, you know, I had an apartment building that I bought and the previous owner was a slumlord and she took it, you know, 60 units spread out over 10 buildings. So they were six, 10 sixplexes. And each building originally when they were built in the 60s had each, each resident had their own detached garage and they were lined up behind all these apartments. 
And instead of putting new roofs on them and repairing them, she just tore them down. So I had 60 concrete pads. And uh, I found a company in China that was manufacturing them. And so I said, I'm going to buy, you know, they come in two packs. So it's 10 by 20, 5,000 pounds steel rectangle blocks. And uh, they were only about 4,500 bucks uh, for the price. But what I didn't know is how much to ship them, how much to set them up. Uh, my net net on them was $6,000 per building. So 3,000 per unit. They're 10 by 10. Uh, what's great is because it's, I, I don't need power to them. Um, I didn't have to pull permits. I literally was able to just put them on those concrete slabs behind my apartment buildings and then rent them out for a hundred bucks a month. So I'm making a hundred, you know, I'm making $1,200 a year for a $3,000 investment. Wow. And, you know, I have no maintenance. I have no property tax. I have, I, I didn't insure them. What am I insuring? That's just made of steel. The tenants need to get renter's insurance on their stuff. And so there's really no overhead because I already owned the land. And, you know, now I got 6,000 a month coming in from these 60 units and I spent 180,000. I don't have a, I don't have a single family home I can buy that can get that kind of return uh, with no property tax, no insurance, no utilities. And so I've been, it's like got my wheels spinning and now I've been putting them into trailer parks and RV parks. And I even bought a lot in a little town in Idaho with less than 200 people. And we're going to do a micro storage development. We're just going to plop 30 of those in there and, and, and uh, advertise it for, you know, put a fence around it and advertise it. And the city loves it because they couldn't convince a big developer to come in and put a nice brand new storage facility. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's an interesting, well, and here's what's ironic because you and I are partners on a storage facility that we bought in Winston. Uh, I believe it had like 85 full units with the ability to expand and we're trying to get permission to put a hundred more. And how ironic that as we've priced out the cost to build these, stick build them, uh, it's about 3,000 a unit. Like, so whether I get it built in Shanghai or whether we stick built them in, in Winston-Salem, 3K for 10 by 10 is a, a number you can take to the bank now. Yeah. Well, you know, what's big in the news right now is they keep talking about commercial. Uh, you know, what's going to happen with that, with the debt, and when, the, when all those loans, that cheap money's coming due here, next year the following year what are your thoughts on that oh man what a crisis and you know i've always said that my, my rule of thumb for people the last 25 years people say what do you think of commercial and i'm like my rule of thumb is I've, i haven't done a lot in commercial unless i knew i needed it for a business mm -hmm. like if i if i wanted to not rent and be an owner commercial has always made sense for me so you know less than that you know we're managing 600 million properties whether it's on a management side or whether it's me personally uh, with, with, with over 300 properties, I have less than 5% in commercial. And, and it's crazy because I, the, the, my favorite example I was reading about at, in the Wall Street Journal a few weeks ago was um, a, a collection of hotels in San Francisco. And San Francisco has just been annihilated. But they were, you know, the, the, it's like three hotels owned by this private equity group for $1.6 billion that are now literally only worth $300 million. And, you know, we're not returning to work and we're not returning to work downtowns like we did in 2019 pre-COVID. And we're seeing this massive shift. Now, there's, it's going to create a vacuum and, and there's going to be huge opportunities uh, for residential development in city centers. Um, but, yeah, it, there's definitely we're going to see an impact from that. Uh, what's great, though, is that the big private equity groups and the big lenders, they're going to take a beating. I don't see it rippling into resident. I, I don't see how it could, not when we're still short 6 million homes. It'd be different if we were overbuilt where mortgage-backed securities spilled over into residential and just annihilated the U.S. market. But when you look at Economics 100 or Economics 101, we don't have enough houses in the U.S. So anything that gets us towards uh, more housing units, whether it's taking a, a commercial building in a downtown and turning it into apartments, which I've seen happen in Indianapolis, or whether it's uh, you know doing high density RV park, those are the things that I'm tracking daily and that are super intriguing to me because any creative idea to get more housing is exploding right now. So as an investor, that's what you want to think about. That's where you want to spend your time educationally, and those are the things that we talk a lot about at our monthly three day event. Yeah, so you know I, I appreciate you taking the time to come on here, and those of you that are watching right now, if you want to come out to that event, I got that link down there in the show notes, and I, I would. Highly encourage you to come out. Um, our firm's going to be there as well. I've been to the event, and you know you're going to come out there. We're not only going to teach you about real estate. Aaron's going to teach you about real estate. He's also going to take you out and show you what it's like to do a rehab because mm -hmm. uh, you put everybody on buses, right? And you, and you bus them around. 
Yeah, and I even bought the bus now. When you when you came, we were renting a bus. Now I own the. I have a bus in Idaho because we do half our events out in Idaho and, and one in Indianapolis. That we <laughs> those buses can be like three grand for the weekend, and you can buy one for ten. So we well, yeah, have an Indiana State pen. They have like uh, bars on the windows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a friend of mine was he does he does tours up in Detroit. And he said he rented a bus and they delivered one of those uh, party bachelorette party buses with the yeah. mirrors and the pole. And, and I said, what did you do? You know, because he read and he, he said, we just went out and looked at properties. And I was like, oh, my God, like the mirrored windows. So we haven't had anything like that happen. But um, yeah. And, and, and one thing that I don't know that we mentioned, but we have properties for sale. And so we buy properties, we fix them up, we sell them to our clients. Uh, and then we also let you partner with us. So uh, that storage unit facility is one that we're going to allow um, our clients to put money in. You know, you have to be accredited, but you could you can invest in us on some of these bigger deals with as little as fifty thousand dollars. And you know, I don't want to get into all that today, but in your head, the education's there, properties are there, access to different relationships in different markets. Uh, Anderson always has uh, attorney representation there. So you can sit down and map out what you need from a legal and, 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 and tax standpoint. And so investors can come over three days. And, and what we see is they, they're able to get through that crossroad and move forward, whether you're trying to create more passive wealth, whether you're trying to maybe get into real estate more and, and, and quit your job. We kind of have an active or a passive solution for everyone. Yeah, what I think is also great about it when you come out there, you're going to be part of a, a community and you're going to build connections. And so you're going to find people if you want to do joint ventures with, they're going to be there. People that have deals, people that have money. So it, I highly encourage you, if you're watching this right now and you're thinking, hey, is this for me? I'll tell you, if you're involved in real estate, you're thinking about getting involved in real estate. It's a great event um, that, that I think everyone should at least go out to once, if not twice or three times. Yeah. And we, you know, we hold them at our offices. So this isn't some hotel ballroom. This is, you know, in Indianapolis, it's our biggest operation. We're managing 1,800 properties in Indy. Uh, we have, you know, multifamily Airbnbs in Idaho. Uh, the, the ones that we hold are in Idaho Falls. And uh, we literally have the cocktail parties at my house. And so it doesn't get any more transparent in terms of, um, you know, we're looking for long term relationships, whether we can educate and partner with you or whether you're interested in buying properties. We've been doing these events going back to 2009 and we've just had a lot of success with it. We don't try to pretend to be anything we aren't. And, and, and there's no big club that you have to invest in and there's no seventy thousand dollar mentor. None of that. If you want to invest with us, we have properties. If you don't have the money for this and you're just getting started, then get our live stream. And we'd love to have you join us virtually and plant that seed now so that you'll think of us down the road when you are ready to invest passively. Perfect. Aaron, hey, thanks for being on. Always a pleasure, man. All right. Take care.